Hello and welcome to Radiobook, where books transform lives. Join us for audiobooks, reviews, and motivation. Subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss all future uploads. Today, we continue with Chapter 12 of Kingdom Citizenship by Dr. Miles Monroe. Let's dive in. Chapter 12 Citizens as Ambassadors Everyone on Earth is in pursuit of something, though they may not fully comprehend what it is or how to articulate it. They explore various avenues, indulging in substances, socializing, seeking new experiences, or pursuing further education, all in an attempt to satisfy this deep longing within them. But what truly fulfills this inner yearning? Those of us who have discovered the kingdom understand it is found in the king himself. Upon encountering him, we realize that he is the answer we've been searching for all along. The moment we find him, we're compelled to share the incredible news with others. He's alive. He loves us. And we can have a personal relationship with him. As we delve deeper into understanding him, our joy only intensifies, and we eagerly desire to introduce others to his remarkable character. This king is not only our God, but also our Father, welcoming us into his kingdom and family simultaneously. While many of us continue within our earthly families and communities, something within us has fundamentally changed. We transition from mere seekers to ambassadors, representatives of our new king and his reign, no matter where we find ourselves. Whether we travel far and wide or remain in one place for years, our presence brings a glimpse of heaven wherever we go. Being religious is not enough. Simply being religious does not fulfill the ultimate purpose set by God. His intention was never merely about religious practices. It's about establishing a profound connection, what I refer to as rulership through relationship. From the outset, God envisioned humans not just ruling over the earth, but doing so in close relationship with Him. Entry into the kingdom of God hinges solely on forming a personal bond with the King and His Son, Jesus. Through Jesus' incarnation, He paved the way for this connection. With His Spirit dwelling within us, we embark on a lifelong journey of becoming more like Him. Moreover, we begin to emit the essence of heaven wherever we tread. The Apostle Paul encapsulated this beautifully, emphasizing our new identity and purpose as ambassadors for Christ. We are tasked with spreading the kingdom's influence globally, showcasing its essence to the world. Those of us who have encountered the kingdom understand it's all about the king. As we delve deeper into knowing him, our desire intensifies to share his character with others. Our salvation isn't solely for our personal benefit, but to serve a greater mission, expanding the kingdom's reach. We've been entrusted with the responsibility of revealing what the kingdom of heaven represents. In essence, we've become diplomats for heaven's interests on earth, ambassadors for Christ. Yet to represent someone effectively, you must intimately know them. That's why mere religiosity falls short. What's required is an ongoing relationship with the one we represent in our daily endeavors. With His Spirit guiding us, maintaining this connection should be natural. But often we need reminders. Books like this one serve as reminders of our role as ambassadors for Christ. Unlike others who adhere to rituals and codes without a personal connection, we have the privilege of being intimately linked to the King Himself. This is the essence of our purpose, to embody and extend His kingdom's influence to the world. More than a messenger, beyond being just messengers, ambassadors in diplomatic circles, though residing in foreign nations, maintain close ties with their home government. Typically, they possess a deep familiarity with their head of state. While ambassadors lack the power to create laws or make policy decisions, they hold a unique status in government-to-government -government relations. Endowed with authority from their governing bodies, their words hold significant influence as senior representatives. In the Bible, the term ambassador translates from the Greek word presbuo, denoting individuals of such stature. Paul employs this term in his letter to the Ephesians, emphasizing his role in spreading the gospel despite being imprisoned. Paul's situation illustrates the essence of ambassadorship. He remained an ambassador for Christ even in confinement. Though restricted in mobility, he continued to communicate through letters, 
interactions with visitors, and prayerful connection with the king. Ambassadors of the kingdom carry the full authority of their country. Their words carry weight, symbolizing their privileged position and responsibility. Vested with authority. In other parts of the New Testament, we encounter another Greek term for ambassador, karux. This term is often translated as preacher, herald, or proclaimer. Such messengers are entrusted with the authority to convey official messages from rulers, officials, or commanders to other authorities, and to carry out duties on behalf of their sending leader. Throughout the New Testament, God's karux ambassadors are seen proclaiming the divine word. These ambassadors were authorized by God the King to deliver messages and fulfill duties on His behalf wherever they went. This authorization didn't cease after the times of the New Testament. You and I have also been vested with the same authority. Jesus addressed us when He said, I confer on you a kingdom, just as my Father conferred one on me. Luke 22, 29 His message is clear. Messengers and ambassadors of the kingdom bear the authority of the entire realm as they move from one place to another. They carry more than just diplomatic formalities or social courtesies. Their words carry weight, and they are aware of it. The significance of the word confer became apparent to me during a ceremony. Some years ago, I was awarded the OBE, Officer of the Most Excellent Order of the British Empire, by a representative of the Queen of England. I had to bow as he placed the insignia around my neck. Then the governor attached a pin to my suit coat, saying as he did so, by the authority of the Queen of England, I confer on you the British Empire. A whole nation was conferred upon me. Now, when I visit England and they see OBE on my passport, everyone responds with respect. Yes, sir, Dr. Monroe. Is there anything we can do for you? Those simple initials carry the weight of authority. Your actions and reactions will reflect your citizenship. Remember, you have been appointed as a local ambassador of the kingdom. Whenever someone becomes an official ambassador of a country, the same phrase is used. I confer on you the Commonwealth of the Bahamas, using the name of the ambassador's country. In this way, that individual embodies the entire nation. We are official ambassadors of the kingdom of God because Jesus has conferred the kingdom upon us. Ambassadorship. You'll never find an ambassador at a club or a disco engaging in behaviors that don't uphold the dignity of their office. Ambassadors are mindful of their actions and words, knowing that their conduct reflects the country they represent. They maintain decorum and avoid public outbursts, as everything they do reflects back on their homeland. This principle should hold true for kingdom ambassadors as well. As we go about our daily lives, whether at the grocery store, gas station, or crossing the street, we should ask ourselves, am I representing heaven? Our actions carry the weight of our heavenly citizenship. Jesus once said, He who has seen me has seen the Father, John 14, 9, indicating that his actions reflected his divine source. Likewise, people should see glimpses of heaven through our behavior. You might be the only believer in your workplace, making you the sole representation of the kingdom to your colleagues. How you conduct yourself serves as a reflection of your citizenship, Remember, you've been appointed as the local ambassador of the kingdom in that setting. Benefits of ambassadorship. Being an ambassador for another country comes with its perks. While maintaining the dignity of your position is crucial, you also enjoy additional benefits beyond your regular citizenship. Take, for instance, the lifestyle of ambassadors. You won't see them driving beat-up cars or wearing shabby clothes because their government covers all their expenses. They live comfortably and if they need something, it's readily provided. Similarly, as citizens of the kingdom, we experience a lifestyle characterized by cleanliness, love, and genuine joy, regardless of where we are in the world. During a trip to Haiti, I witnessed this firsthand. The Bahamian ambassador treated us to a luxurious experience amid the poverty-stricken surroundings. We traveled in style, passing through the streets in an air-conditioned SUV adorned with the Bahamian flag. People were undoubtedly intrigued by the prosperity symbolized by the flag. Arriving at the ambassador's residence, we were greeted with lavish hospitality. Despite the earthquake devastation outside, we enjoyed a sumptuous breakfast in deluxe accommodations. The ambassador's lifestyle mirrored that of his homeland, demonstrating the richness of his country wherever he went.
in a similar manner as kingdom citizens, we receive abundant blessings even in the midst of a broken world. God takes care of us, shaping us to reflect His character and providing us with a taste of His kingdom's abundance. This culture of abundance draws people to God, showcasing His goodness and inviting them into His kingdom. Every citizen of the kingdom is an ambassador. Every individual who belongs to the kingdom is essentially a representative, an ambassador. When you head to work or run errands tomorrow, remember your heavenly citizenship and your role as a kingdom ambassador. It's crucial to keep this identity in mind because without it, you won't effectively represent the king. He has entrusted you with his authority and given you a specific task to reflect his values wherever you go and share the truth about the kingdom you represent. Can you fulfill this responsibility? My prayer is that you maintain a daily connection with the king, listening attentively to his guidance. Though your assignment may seem minor, how you carry it out holds great significance. May your citizenship in the kingdom empower you to be a genuine ambassador. And may the king commend you for your faithful service when your time on earth is complete. Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. Matthew 25, 21, NIV. May these be the words that welcome you home to heaven.